progress. For more on the situation, I'm now joined by Reza Marashi, Research Director at the National Iranian American Council. Uh, do you think we can see this as a window of opportunity here to make a serious breakthrough ahead of those talks on Iran's nuclear program in Moscow? Uh, absolutely. M more diplomacy is almost always a good thing. And when the permanent members of the Security Council, the United Nations Security Council plus Germany, sit down at the negotiating table with Iran, if there's no prep work that's done in advance of those negotiations, then it essentially becomes a process that's tantamount to having a kitchen full of cooks and nobody has a spoon. So laying the groundwork and taking care of some of the technical and political aspects in advance increases the likelihood for an already difficult diplomatic process to, to be more successful than it would be otherwise. Iranian leader Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is set to step down later this year. What does that mean for the ongoing talks to resolve the nuclear issue? I think President Ahmadinejad has, uh, over the duration of, of, of his presidency, uh, maybe lost some of the influence and some of the power that, that folks thought he had and that perhaps he really did have towards the beginning and middle of his presidency. Um, you know, there's been a more centralized control, a more centralized power that's been put into Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, Iran's supreme leader, particularly since June of 2009 in the contested presidential election. So uh, he, he's a politician that won't go down without a fight, but, um, you know, right now he, he seems to be more on the quiet end, and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens from there. But I don't see a scenario popping up where he can outright spoil the talks because the supreme leader is uh, putting his stamp on this process going forward. The U.S. has been pushing all countries to reject Iranian oil imports. With the conflict in Syria escalating, isn't this likely to further destabilize the region? It certainly could. Uh, while the United States is spearheading uh, a Western effort to uh, embargo, if not outright reduce, uh, Iranian oil exports and imports, uh, there are a host of other conflicts going on in the region. Uh, there is economic instability in Europe, but there's also efforts to ensure that countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, who have swing capacity when it comes to producing energy, increase their output and maximizing the output that's been increasing uh, in Libya, places like Iraq and things like that. Getting countries off Iranian oil oftentimes requires them to uh, have a different refining process uh, for different oil than Iran's oil. So it's a longer term process that they've been working on for a while now. And we really are in uncharted waters, so it certainly is a roll of the dice that could come back to backfire, particularly in an election year, if the Obama administration doesn't play its cards carefully. Uh, the UN has an, uh, initially rejected the idea of Tehran's involvement in settling, or at least trying to settle, uh, the Syrian conflict. With the situation there, like I said, looking graver by the day, is this maybe the right time to engage with Iran? Could it perhaps help to make a breakthrough? Well, I think this is a component of, of Kofi Annan's plan uh, that he's put forward, which is engaging the various stakeholders in an effort to facilitate uh, a diplomatic solution to this crisis. Um, I'm of the opinion uh, that, quite frankly, I think many in the Obama administration privately share, and many in Europe privately share, and I, and I know certainly Russia shares and the Chinese share, which is uh, there are military options, but there's really no military solution. Uh, this situation requires a political solution that all parties, including Assad, the Russians, the opposition, the Iranians, and a host of other actors are going to have to buy into. And, uh, of course, that's not going to be something that can be uh, discovered or struck right away. Uh, it's going to take some time. In the meantime, every side is going to continue to try to maximize its leverage to increase the likelihood of, of, of obtaining the most favorable outcome. And the unfortunate reality in that situation is that innocent lives are being lost as a result. So the sooner all parties focus on the political solution that can stop the killing and find the political solution to the overall crisis, the better off the world is going to be, and particularly the Syrian people are going to be. Reza Marashi, Research Director at the National Iranian American Council, live with us on the line from Washington. Thanks for that.